Can you tell us about conscious consumerism? These liberal boycotts are always an embarrassing failure. We're gonna boycott the boycotters. You need to be both a political activist and a consumer activist. Being a consumer, it's one of the few things that we all have in common, and it does have its perks. Consumerism is how we got smartphones, guns, smartphones that look like guns, guns that look like smartphones, and YouTube videos of people shooting smartphones with guns. While we don't really have a choice whether we are consumers, we do have a choice in what we consume. And a majority of Americans want the things they buy to reflect their values, be they political, moral, or environmental. And companies have figured that out. People need to care more in order for change to happen. In a time when people feel especially powerless, it's exciting to think that you could use your wallet to fight for the things that you believe in. That's why some people responded to Chick-fil-A's support of anti-LGBTQ organizations back in 2012 by not eating there. And others took a different route. God bless you, Chick-fil-A. At any given time, about a third of Americans are boycotting one or more companies for any number of reasons. Y'all want already want a virtue signal. Let's call it boycott all sports. McDonald's breakfast, y'all suck. I'm not boycotting y'all. I'd read this. Don't ever go to fucking mattress firm because they'll fucking kidnap you. I'm not fucking joking. If you want to get the attention of our corporate overlords, you could do what Dave Chappelle did when he called on his fans to boycott him. If you ever liked me, if you ever think there was anything worthwhile about me, I'm begging you. Boycott me. Chappelle was upset that Viacom was making money by licensing The Chappelle Show, something he doesn't get paid for. And sure enough, his self-boycott got Netflix and HBO Max to stop airing the show. But very few of us have a platform as big as Dave Chappelle's, and even fewer of us are Dave Chappelle. But if you are Dave Chappelle, hello. How are you? Thank you for watching. If you're really looking to make a point, you might consider joining forces with a lot of other pissed off people. More than 99% of the Negro people of Montgomery rose up with a bit of uh, indignation, a righteous indignation, I would say. One of history's most famous boycotts, the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott, followed the arrest of Rosa Parks. But it was successful in large part because black people made up three quarters of the customers using the bus system. So an organized protest was a serious financial hit. Even then, the boycott had to go on for over a year and only ended when the Supreme Court stepped in and ruled that bus segregation laws were unconstitutional. Because apparently, for many white Southerners, the threat of their city going broke wasn't nearly as scary as the threat of racial equality. Ooh, I can vote now. These days, boycotting is a lot like hooking up. Social media has made it easier to do, but not necessarily better. Many campaigns end in calculated corporate PR statements spending millions on ads that at least say they'll do better. But like anyone you're in a toxic relationship with, stops just short of actually apologizing. From now on, Facebook will do more to keep you safe and protect your privacy. It's a new day at Wells Fargo because earning back your trust is our greatest priority. It's time to move in a new direction. And I want you to know just how excited I am to write Uber's next chapter. The problem with fighting a company that may or may not be morally bankrupt, but definitely not financially bankrupt, is that it takes a lot of time. A sustained boycott is often credited with finally forcing Nike to stop making its products with child labor and sweatshop wages. That campaign spanned the late 80s and most of the 90s. That's two separate decades for those of you who abhor Amazon's labor practices but can't stand the idea of waiting two separate days for shipping. One of the hardest parts of taking an ideological stand against a corporation isn't necessarily that company, it's other customers. A success a boycott could inspire a counter boycott because for every action there is an equal and opposite petty reaction. Anytime a business takes a political stance, you run the risk of turning off a subset of your consumer base, and that yeah. seems to be exactly what Nordstrom's done here. In 2017, liberal Americans turned on Nordstrom for carrying Ivanka Trump's clothing line, which, by the way, perfect clothes if you need to awkwardly force yourself into a conversation with world leaders who 
don't care who you are. As soon as you start talking about the economic aspect of it, though, yeah. a lot of people start listening who yeah. wouldn't start otherwise listening. listen. And the same with the defense side. When the store stopped carrying the line shortly thereafter, the Trump supporters showed up, or I guess, didn't. Because of your decision to drop Ivanka Trump, I will no longer shop at your store, nor will my husband or our nine children or our eight grandchildren. Since most of us don't have an army of family members to call on, many people try to fight back against boycotts by doing exactly the opposite, buying things, also known as a boycott, not to be confused with a boycott, which of course means sleeping on a cot twice a week and every other week. It's a scheduling nightmare. When liberals threatened to boycott Goya Foods after the CEO came out strong for President Trump, the president's supporters made their opinions known by suddenly becoming bean fanatics. Everyone needs to buy at least $10 worth of Goya Foods. I want to specifically buy with my own money some Goya brand items. They want to move America in the direction of the United States of Socialism. We need to stop them by Goya. We all know there's no better way to own the libs than consuming so much fiber that your tummy hurts. But at least buying beans gets you beans. A go-to protest for people angry at a company's politics has become destroying things they already own, or as I like to call it, looting yourself. Here's what you do if you own any razors from the man-hating company known as Gillette. Pick them up, open the garbage can, throw it in there. It's a gesture that certainly expresses one's emotions, but overlooks that pesky detail that the company already has your money. Amazingly, you can support a company for reasons other than showing your enemies what's up. There are now apps that allow you to scan a product code and see if the company that made it aligns with the values and causes that are important to you. Your food can be GMO free. Your cleaning products can come from companies that pay women equal to men. And your fur can come from companies that only kill annoying animals. Together, we can spend our way to equality. It is appealing to think that you aren't just paying for dinner or going on a shopping spree, that you're standing up for what you believe in. But finding the right companies to support isn't easy, especially when many of your go-to artisanal brands are owned by the very corporations you're trying to get away from. Companies spend millions of dollars branding and rebranding to attract conscious consumers, even when that image is at odds with what they actually do. I challenge Exxon to disprove that it spends more on advertisements touting its renewable investments than it does on the renewable investments themselves. Corporations would love for you to believe that it's your fault the world is a mess, caused by your failure to choose the most conscientious brands. But even if you were to perfectly curate every product you own to align with your views on, say, environmentalism, about a third of all carbon emissions come from 20 companies. 20 companies that aren't changing what they do just because you wipe your ass with environmentally friendly toilet paper. It's the consumer paradox. Our individual actions can't fix structural problems, but structural problems can't be fixed without individual actions, or at least actions to make sure that the people causing the problems are held responsible for fixing them. But since we have to buy something, it makes sense to put your money towards the companies, people, and things you believe in. Unless you specifically disagree with the things that I believe in, in which case you are wrong.